For today's message, I want to talk about resistance. My message is better living by releasing resistance. As I've contemplated this talk, it seems to me as though we are exhausted because we're so resistant. If we were allowing the infinite presence that we are to flow freely and effortlessly through us, we would live in an ease and grace and flowing sense of life, of creativity, of comfort and grace and guidance. But what happens in this human experience, it seems to me, is that we get habituated towards resisting. Resisting what's happening, resisting who's there, resisting what's going on, resisting all these things that I want to talk about today. And we get so habituated to it that we lose sense of the natural flow of our life. And this is causing us, by and large, I think, to feel exhausted because we're not being energized by that infinite, limitless energy. To feel anxiety because we're not allowing ourselves to be in touch with the truth of who we are and to freely express it. To feel depressed because we're not allowing ourselves to have our feelings or our thoughts or we're, we're editing ourselves and keeping ourselves from following our dreams and speaking our truth and being who we really are. And it seems to me like the more we resist, the harder it becomes to be happy and fulfilled and joyful. And it's, it's, it's zapping us in a way. I uh, call your attention to this brace. I'm not trying to be fashionable, the new fashion. And I'm not punching anybody out either. Some of you have accused me of being a puncher. I don't even, I'm not a puncher. But I did have a minor, minor bike accident, and then I fell again on it. But, you know, I won't tell you that whole story. It involved bark all over my butt and all sorts of good stuff, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but here, I'm, I'm only calling your attention to it because what I noticed this past week especially, it's not broken, it's uh, sprained, and I had it x-rayed, and I'm doing good things to it, all the good medicine and woo-woo stuff. But I noticed that uh, my attention is on it because it's painful, and when I feel the pain of it, it kind of keeps me from being fully present at times. And I also notice that my physical body is a little more tired because my body is doing all that it can to send healing energy to that. It's just like when we get sick or something happens, the immune system that is so powerful and profound does its job by turning its attention totally on the owie or the boo-boo or the virus or whatever it is that we've got. And it causes the rest of our system to possibly feel a little draggy. And I think that's what humanity is going through right now. We're resistant so much of the time. We're in resistance so much of the time that the energy is going towards trying to invite us out of that resistance. And then we can't be fully present. We can't have our entire energy live and in person and totally with us. It has become a habituated state often for humans. Whereas those who are peaceful and peace-filled are often in non-resistance to what's happening and what's going on and what's around them. And it's not always easy to do it. I, I, I found this beautiful meme this week, funny meme actually, about substitutes for a healthy diet. And so here's the list. You can substitute for pasta. It says you can substitute zucchini, right? For chips, like potato chips, you can substitute carrots. For milk, you can substitute almond milk. And for rice, you can have cauliflower rice is what it says. And then it gets to butter, sadness. <laughs> and then the next one it says is cheese, nope. <laughs> and the last one is my favorite, tacos. This is stupid, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I agree, totally agree with the tacos, I'm not, not, that is stupid, I'm not doing it. And so it's that whole like, uh, 
no, I'm not doing that. No, and not that this is all wrong or bad, but that energy with, I don't want to, I can't, it's not enough, it's not, it's not good enough, I'm, I'm not good enough, it's no heaven. That whole co- conversation about resistance can capture us. And here's the thing that I've noticed. I have become particularly tuned into my own resistance pretty profoundly because I will admit that I haven't been perfect about this. Honestly, when I look back at the journey of my life, the things that I had the greatest resistance to often turned out to be the exact thing that I was supposed to be doing. Like ministry, for example, rose up in me, you should be a minister. Here was my response. Dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> That's stupid. Uh, it was kind of like, this is stupid. I'm not doing it. Exactly like that. That's stupid. I'm not doing that. Complete resistance. Fought it, fought it, fought it, fought. Until something in me, like a river that burst through, just knew. Yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. And when the resistance fell away, everything flowed in my direction, allowing me to move in the direction that served me. So sometimes the places, the people, the things we feel the greatest resistance rise up in us, (laughs) Those are the exact things we're supposed to be with and doing. So resistance can be a beautiful clue to us. Resistance also can be an invitation to change. Sometimes the thing that we really need to be doing that will serve us best, we know it, we feel it, but we're resistant to it. It's an invitation to make an important change for ourselves. Buddha says, change is never painful, only the resistance to change is painful. So we resist it. We know what we should do, but we don't want to do it. After the first service, one of our members, Sharon, came to me and she said, very, in a very Star Wars uh, fashion, I didn't realize I was part of the resistance. <laughs> I thought, I'm asking us today. To think about when it comes to living your life full out, are you part of the resistance? Is there a part of you fighting to remain small, to remain safe, to remain quiet, to remain unseen, to to not take the risks that it might take? This might be your resistance talking. The great author and uh, writer Jack Addington wrote an article in the New Thought magazine who said, the opposite of peace of mind is conflict, inner conflict that stems from resistance of one sort or another. Resisting people, resisting situations, resisting weather, resisting circumstances, resisting ideas. Resistance brings turmoil, chaos, conflict, and resulting stress into the life and experience of the one who entertains it. So I have three resistance-releasing practices for us to consider today, to let go and allow the floodgates of the life that lives inside of us to finally have its way with us. And it will involve us really looking at where we are resistant and what might be causing it, and really be willing to look at, are we willing to let it go and flow freely into full-out living? So the first resistance practice is resistance to what you think should be happening. Resistance to what you think should be happening. I know that in life, as we're moving along, things don't always go our way. Sometimes we get, has that never happened to you, Jeanette, up till now? No, okay, well, everybody follow Jeanette around. She's living a good life. (laughs) Things don't always go our way. We, We don't always get what we want. We don't always get the result we were hoping for. People don't always do what we hoped they would do or say what we hoped they would say. Uh, Our body doesn't always do what we hope it will do. Things happen in our financial life. And what happens to us humans is when we don't get what we want, sometimes we're tempted to fall into resistance. And resistance might look like being stuck in our angst about why it's not the way we wish it was. 
they left me or I was betrayed or I, I ran out of money or I got let go from my job, just like, just like Denise's song, and we get stuck in our emotions. Now, it's not that we never are disappointed, sad, uh, feel frustrated, lose people we love who die and don't feel the grief of that. It's not that I'm saying we don't do that, but here's how we know we've been in resistance if that's happened years and years ago and we've still still got it at the top of our mind, the top of our story. Carolyn Mace used to say, when people say, how are you? Are you leading with your brokenness? Well, I, I'm great, but you know, 10 years, if my husband, 10 years ago, if my husband wouldn't have left me, I'd be better, <laughs> right? I'm great, but uh, if I'd only kept that job I had when I was a kid, I'm great. But we hang on sometimes, and the resistance to what has happened to us, as well as the degree to which we are resisting what's happening right now in our life is the degree to which we are disempowered. You and I cannot be powerful responders to the conditions of our life if we are all about this should not be happening right now. They should not be doing this. They should not have said that to me. They should not have done that to me. This should not be happening. A peaceful person who is fully empowered at some point stops and says, this is what's so. This is happening. I'm present. What's my guidance to do? If we don't do that, we aren't guided at all. We are in reactionary response to everything that's going on in our own world and in the world around us, in the world out there, the only empowered reaction is to give up our resistance to what's happening and lean fully into it so that we can really hear from a guided place what is ours to do. How is it that I am to respond? How is it that I am to make a difference here? Giving up resistance to what's happening allows us to be present and to notice what we can be doing or how we can move through the challenges that we face. The second practice is to resist, to give up resisting who you think you are. There's this level of who we are at the human level that comes with all we've been and all we've done and all we've accomplished and the things we've learned and the challenges we've been through and all of that. And then there's a deeper aspect of ourselves that upon understanding the difference between all of that stuff at the surface level that defines us and the deeper truth of us, we become empowered and in greater flow because we're not spending time with our, our broken stories or our labels that don't paint us in the most perfect way. It's one thing to say, for example, I am fully aware that uh, painting, painting is not something yet that I know how to do very well. I don't need to sit around and criticize, well, I'm not a painter. Her. I can't paint pictures. I can't do what that lady can do. Ooh. It's one thing to go, yeah, I'm not a painter. I, I could probably do it. I'd give it a try. It's not my strength. And it's another thing to fall into my victimhood and fall into my story and, and allow myself to get caught up in my labels. My lovely friend, Faith, who's here today, wearing peak today. Thank you, Faith. She introduced me to a beautiful book uh, called The Power of Sur the Magic of Surrender by Coot Blackson. We have a picture of it here. I'm sorry, but we sold out of them at the first service. Uh, <laughs> we, had, we had some. This is a beautiful, beautiful bo book. I have loved reading it. Thank you so much, Faith, for introducing me to him. And in this book, there's a section where he's talking about uh, making space, and he talks about, imagine, if you will, that you got into a car accident and were taken to the hospital, and upon waking up, you've lost your memory completely of who you are. 
You don't remember what happened. In fact, you don't even remember who you are. Or I, He says, I walk into the room and I tell you that your memory is gone forever and I'm here to fill in the blanks. He says, your name is Sam. You've got a wife and three kids and they're waiting just outside the door. You work at a financial management planning company in Minneapolis. You love karate and Japanese food. What would you say, he says, what could you say? And this is key. Who are you if everything you know about yourself has been erased? Really, where did the you that you were before go? Where is this you? What is this you? Where do you exist in that hospital room with no memories and no stories or beliefs about yourself, no history at all? What is the one thing that you can know for sure, he says. Take a moment to consider. What could you know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt? Because we've all been told who we are, what our name is, what our religion might have been when we were young. But the only thing... The only thing that we could know for sure in that moment is I am. I exist. That's the place where non-resistance lives. When we encounter that part of ourselves that goes way beyond the labels, we are in non-resistance. Because otherwise, he says, um, we are not, I am not enough. I'm unworthy, I'm unlovable, I'm a failure, I'm Johnny, I'm Coot, I'm Jewish, I'm Buddhist, I'm a bad mother, I'm smart, I'm stupid, I'm not a creative person. Those are just labels. They're not the truth about us. You wouldn't even know what town you were in if that were to happen, but you would look around and you could know, I am, I exist. This is why so many of us do spiritual practice and meditation and seek every day to withdraw from the life that labels us and where we're tempted to fall into our labels in, in order to feel and sense this deeper flowing river of beingness that is the I am of ourselves. And upon experiencing this, which, by the way, we don't have to get into a car accident and have amnesia to experience, we can feel the life that is calling us. We don't get attached to the labels. We live a life non-resistant to the labels. When someone else tries to label us something and we know it's not the truth of us, we have no need to be offended. We have no need to get upset. We have no need to fight them on it because we know in this non-resistant place the truth of who we are. And we be it and we live it and we show it. This is how we surrender and allow ourselves to be non-resistant to who we really are and begin to hear the call of that. And then lastly, to release the resistance of who we think other people are. We are in a time, I think, where more than anything else, we are tempted to cast a perception upon a person based on a picture we see on Facebook or something they say on social media, or something we hear. We soundbite each other all the time, and through these teeny little sound bites we get about each other, we draw huge conclusions, often that, that allow us to continue to persist in believing about what's wrong with that person, or how they're wrong, or why they're, they're misguided, or whatever. And so we are in a pattern sometimes, if we don't pay attention, of mis casting people with labels that are may not actually be the truth of who they are but cause us to have a perception about them and we may think it's no big deal to do that but I call us to something that that wonderful wise prophet and teacher Jesus said something that often confuses human beings because Jesus talked to us and his followers about resist not evil Now, in our teaching, we believe that evil is the experience of separation. 
being absolutely and feeling absolutely separated and disconnected from the flow of the good that God is. And that any time we're in that darkness of separation and feeling disconnected from life, from ourselves, from other people, that we're experiencing that energy, that it's not a, an evil being or it's not a force unto itself. It's an experience that we might have. But Jesus, and Jesus knew this, I think, and he says, don't resist it. What does he mean by that? Well, our, found, our founder, Ernest Holmes, says to us, Jesus tells us to resist not evil, to love our enemies, and to do good to them who would even do us evil. For this, this is the important part, this is to manifest the spirit of love, which is God. It's to understand that our labels are not important. To give up our obsessive need to label everybody as good, bad, like them, hate them, want them, yes them, all the ups, downs, up arrows, down arrows, love arrows, hug arrows. To release that need to obsessively be labeling people. And rather, when we re release resistance, the motivation is all about, can I resist evil? Can I resist separation? Can I surrender and resist not my potential to want to separate them, but to see that in myself and to call myself on it so that I can bring myself back into the true nature of what I'm called to do, which is to love, to love to love people, to understand, as I was talking about a few weeks ago when we talked about judgment, that we can be discerning. We can say those people over there are about something that doesn't resonate with me. I'm not going to be involved in that, but I send them love and blessings. Do you. I'll do me. Oh, what would it be like if we could trust each other that if we all did that, life could still be great. Life could be wonderful to resist not evil, to resist not the temptation to fall into separation. That's what he's talking about. When we do this, the ultimate outcome is that the habituated notion of resistance has caught on to us so badly, as I was saying in the beginning, that many of us, we've lost touch with the God within us. When we break the habit in any or all of these realms of life, when we invite ourselves to see the resistance rising in us to ourselves, to other people, to conditions, and we work with it and dance with it to lower it, to let it go, to say, oh, there's me being in resistance, and instead I'm going to be present, what begins to happen is that we start to access our truest nature. When we start to access our truest nature, Here's what's happen, happens. We fall into right action. The things that we want to do, the dreams that we have, the ways that we want to live our best lives, just flow. We fall into the greatest guidance we could have ever imagined. If we ever suffer with, should I do this or should I do that or should I do this or should I do that? That's resistance. Even though it looks like decision making, it's resistance. Because below that, should I do this, should I do that? Below the surface of that, there's that inner voice that says, do that. That's what you came here to do. Do that. And that guidance becomes ours and guides us forward in our life. And there's not as much energy needed to do the things that we want to do and to live the life that we want to live. How we know we're in resistance sometimes is that moving through our life can feel like we're moving through mud or through sand, quicksand. When we are in non-resistance, there's a flow and an energy it's like there's a part of us that resistance builds up these glass walls that just obfuscates the true nature of who we are. And when we challenge resistance, it's like shattering those glasses and allowing them to fall down so that the fullness of who we are can rise forward and be. Now, the true measure of a good talk often is not only referring to Star Wars, but to refer to Star Trek, too. So I close with remember that resistance is futile. 
Resistance is futile. <laughs> Thank you. And let us pray together. <laughs> I invite our practitioner prayer partners to stand with me if they choose to in this prayerful time to allow ourselves to breathe in the very breath of life. <sighs> to have a non-resistant feeling of just breathing. Breathing in and breathing out and feeling that the breath constantly leads us into the flow of life. And that's why so many of us use it as a centering tool when we're feeling resistant, sometimes it can help just to breathe and remember, I can breathe in and I can breathe out. I am non-resistant. And so we feel the call and the pull of life itself as it calls each one of us to be and do who we came here to be, what we came here to do in this life, to live it full out, to recognize that at every moment of our existence, the one life, the one presence, the one power, the one God is seeking expression in and through each one of us and every other being on this planet. To breathe that in and breathe that out and to be non-resistant to this truth that there is magnificence within us and that the pathway to it, to letting it out, is to surrender any part of us that is resistant to being magnificent. To being the truth of us. To being the authentic God presence. This is the path to peace, to well-being, to joy, to right action for ourselves and all others. This is the, the path to contributing greatly to life, to knowing that as a non-resistant being, to the light that seeks expression through me, that I don't even have to do anything. I can just stand in a grocery store line and my life and the light that I am feeds and serves and nurtures every person that I come in contact with. That is non-resistance. That is being a beacon of light and love. It's who each one of us truly is. We claim it this day. We feel our yes to it. We recognize in our life where we may have been resistant up until now to be fully expressed. And we lovingly stand with it and know that we are guided to let go and release resistance to our greatest good right here and right now. I know this is true of every person who hears this prayer. I know that this is the true nature of each one of us. And I know that we know the way, even though that resistant voice within us wants to talk us out of it and say, but I don't know how. I know we know. And so in this moment, we let it be. We give thanks we give thanks for this intentionality that rises forth within us and we walk forward from this place into our lives, seeing clearly, living clearly, surrendered into truth, into us. Ah, in gratitude, I just let this go, releasing this word and this prayer into that law that makes it happen. And we accept this together by saying together, and so it is. Amen.